beach landscape. Today we're going to work on doing some decorative thread painting and embellishment to really bring this beach landscape to life. So what I am starting out with first, I'm just going to do some straight stitching. I like using my thread cutter, so don't worry that I cut my thread often. I like to see where I'm going and what I'm doing, and I find that if I try not to cut my threads, then I tend to overstitch. So I'm looking for some dark areas in these dune grasses so that I can come along the edge and stitch. Just doing some simple lines that are going to give definition to what I'm working on. Okay. I usually wait and cut my threads when I'm sitting down and relaxing after I've done this. But if you've start catching your presser foot on the threads. You may have to cut them more often. Okay. Sometimes I might want to move back and forth a little while I'm there. And that's easy enough to do. I don't often drop my feed dogs because I find that I just can't get used to the fact that the fabric won't move unless I'm constantly moving it. So it's up to you whether you want to drop your feed dogs. You might break your thread a little more often by not dropping them, but I don't really think that's a big deal. So I'm hoping you can see that it is bringing some definition to the work, and the yarns are a lot of fun. Hi, Gromit. You good boy. If you get some cookies. Okay.
Okay. All right, I think that's enough of the green threads because I'm just accenting it. I'm not trying to cover up my work. When I was first doing thread painting, I wanted to put too much thread on it. And you're supposed to, the thread, your fabric is your best singer. Let's do it in terms of chorus. And you just want to add a little soprano and a little bass. But you want to let your thread do the speaking and your embellishments and your accents be just that, an accent, not the, not the main story. Okay. Now, I have a big group. I have a big group of threads sitting here and some containers of embellishment. And that way... When I'm ready to use them, they're right there. I take out what I think I will, I may use, and if I don't use it, that's fine too. All right, I'm gonna try a little bit of this variegated thread and see what I think of that. I like it. It gives a little heavier touch. I like it very much. All right, I think that's enough of that one. What I have done. And what I'm showing you right now is the thread painting with different color greens and all the way to a yellow that I put in here to give highlights, to give shadows, and to give definition to these beach grasses. I even used some decorative yarns to give some fun and depth and dimension to these grasses. I was very lucky. I have a very nice sister-in-law. Thank you, Linda, who is an avid, talented knitter and her wonderful friends. And a few years ago, I asked her if she had any little bits of yarn or yarn she no longer liked that I could use in my art quilting. And as you can see, I, oh, she gave me, they gave me a big bag and I thank them so much. Look at this one. Doesn't that do a great job of imitating seaweed? Isn't that wonderful? So these are just a few that they gave me and I am so grateful because it really adds so much to art quilting. 
and I used YLI invisible thread to stitch them down usually on a zigzag and as you can see I'm holding a piece of it now it's very hair hair thin it's amazing and it did a great job so I just wanted to show you again what I did with the dune grasses now I'm gonna try some of this variegated thread because I've got an idea I'm going to try to make emphasize the sandy beach area of this dune let me see how it looks to have a little thread painting on here okay let's see I like the variegated because nature has so many different colors in it. Now what I think I'm going to do is I've got these wool fibers that my daughter gave me and some are all kinds of various shades and I'm going to put some of this to look like the sandy beach. Yep, it smells like a sheep. But let's see if I can I'm going to sew this down with a zigzag. Let's see. I like that. I like the little fuzzy look it gives. You could use some tool or other things like that if you wished. Then I'm going to switch back to the YLI invisible thread for the moment and try something. If it doesn't work, you can always unstitch it. That's the beautiful thing about sewing. There are very few things that you could really mess up. What I'm going to do is come in here where the lines in the sand are dark and I'm going to try to give a little depth to these lines. Now the, the lines, the dark areas are there because they represent the floatsome and jetsome that gets wiped, washed up by the tide. So, I'm going to take, cut these pieces for now. And I'm going to, this is going to represent seaweed. I'm going to go back to my zigzag. Let's say that these fibers in the lawn end up, the fibers in the yarn end up looking too busy. You can always trim them. Give them a little haircut. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I think this... Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to my top point up here. I like always sewing towards me so I can see what I'm doing. And the further I get away from the front, the more I will stitch it down because you don't want it as fluffy as it goes back into the scenery. 
that's part of what helps it look create that uh, perspective the distance Okay, so I'm now going to go back up. When I get up to about here, I'm going to work on trying to flatten it as much as possible so that it just adds color, not too much texture. All right. So there's that. Now I'm going to take this and add... I'm going to bring this one. Now I've got a lighter color too. So I'll use the lighter color up nice and close. Use this darker color a little farther away. Okay. So first I just stitch it down to hold it there. Then I'll leave my needle down. Turn my fabric so I can see where I'm going. And I want to kind of trap these fibers down. And I can back up a little bit, get these fibers, tack them down with the invisible thread. All right, now, one thing I want to do right now. Right here, it looks a little too messy. And so, and I don't want it to go in the lighter areas. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut. You see what I'm doing? I'm giving it a little bit of a haircut. And that way... It won't interfere in the lighter highlighted areas of my beach. Right here, I'll give this a little haircut too. I, I am the master of this picture and I can do whatever I want. And if I don't like something, I can undo it too. That's the best part. Now, if you don't have some of this, this is called eyelash yarn. And if for some reason you didn't have any, you can get whatever kind of yarn you want. It's just a matter of, it's just about adding extra fibers to give depth and interest to your scenery. Then I'll come back here and trim up some of these wispies. They've done what I want them to do, which is give a little bit of wispiness, a depth of color and texture without being something solid. Because, you know, you can just imagine this stuff on a beach it's just little bits and 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 pieces and it's all kinds of little things that make up that dark color on the tide line and you don't want something solid and hefty all right so give it a haircut wherever you wish until it looks like what you want it to look like. All 
All right. So now I'm going to take a piece of the lighter color and come work that in all around. prefer using this in pieces so I don't have to drag around the spool of yarn. Okay, so I've placed the yarn where I want it to be. Now what I'm going to do is go back in and tack it down a little better so that it doesn't quite look so fluffy. I'm going to make my zigzag a little wider. And let's see. Okay, now I need to tr do some trimming of this, but do you see how much more life we gave the beach? Isn't that awesome? I really like that. I think I'm going to come across here and put some of this lighter color as well. So I'm just running this by the bottom. I'm going to move up for a bit to the sky area. I don't often like to stay in one area for too long, and there's a good reason for that. It helps me to move away from that area, think about it, decide if I've put enough or too much, and move to another area. Plus, it, it helps me get a little more excited about what's happening. So now I'm going to move up to the sky area and see if I can do some def defining for it. I'm going to do a straight stitch and kind of do some outlines of possible buildings that are up there creating this shadow behind the sun. I ran up into this sunset, so let me get this out of the way. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. Just giving this area a little bit of definition. Sometimes accidentally spilling into the sunset. I don't want to do that. So what I've been doing is just stitching a thread with a, just a tiny amount of glitter in it to kind of give definition to this. What this really is it would be houses and condos in the background and you can't really see them because the sun's so bright everything looks dark. Dark navy blue. I'm going to do a little bit of outlining in this nighttime sky.
Now I'm switching to a nice medium blue YLI thread. Now I don't want to do too much outlining. I want to give it some distinction, but I don't want to make it look too choppy. So I'm going to be very careful and not do too much. But I just thought I would show you what a difference thread painting makes. Just straight lines using the thread colors is all you need. You don't want to cover the fabric, you just want to accent the fabric. Alright, now let's get back to the rest of it.